Hi there. I really want to start this video by saying thank you to everybody who shared my video, who watched my video, who left comments on my blog and on my Vimeo page. Uh, I really hope you found it helpful and I'm so happy uh, when I when I get uh, your awesome comments and your questions about the tutorial and how it helped you. And please, please feel free to email me about anything or leave a comment into my, uh, in my blog and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so when we finish the, the, when I finish the first video of Realistic Soft Gloss Shader Tutorial, I promise that I'm gonna do a follow-up on that, on showing how do I take that rendering into Photoshop and add a bit of softness and atmosphere to it. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I'm gonna open up Photoshop. And for this render, I only rendered two passes. Uh, I render the diffuse and the beauty pass. So this is the beauty pass and this is the diffuse. I'm just going to take the diffuse, copy it, paste it into the over the beauty. Uh, usually I rendered everything into 32 bit AXR just because I do have that much control when it comes to lighting. And if I want to add a bit of exposure to my final renders, I can definitely add that. But AXR uh, is a bit uh, or 32 images actually are a bit limited into Photoshop. So you can do, you do, if you look at the adjustments, you'll see that a lot of them are grayed out. But you can do a bit of tweaking before uh, converting the image into 16 bits. So you can do a lot of a lot of work to it. So usually the only thing that I would do is I would go into this and maybe tweak the exposure, you know, lower it or make it higher because it looks more natural uh, if if you do it in 32 bits rather than 16 or 18 bit or 8 bit, or 8 bit, 8 bits. All right, so once I'm happy with the result, I'm just going to go ahead and merge it, go into image mode and change it into 16 bit so I can start, you know, making uh, all the edits that I want. Now, before I start adding any, uh, I usually do the diffuse uh, just so I can use it to create a sharpness map. And to do that, you go into image, adjustments saturate and then i go into filter other and go high pass i usually something around four is okay but again play around with it and you might get something really nice and overlay and you can see the difference quite quite a huge difference and you can always uh tweak it tweak the opacity of it if if the effect is way too strong all right, once I'm happy with that, I'll go in and I'm going to add one of my favorite, you know, adjustments in Photoshop is color lookup. Because it just adds that much, you know, oomph for the for your renders, you know, make colors pop or or maybe it can help you also make some a bit of creative decisions when it comes to the to the final render. So, usually I'll add like a film stock uh, which adds a lot of color and contrast. This is way too strong. Something around 10% is, is, is okay, 10, 15%. But again, feel free to experiment and, and play around with this. Uh, on top of that, I might add a new one. And usually this is just to, you know, you know, to check out the mood that I'm going with. And usually I'll just, you know, I'll just browse through the ones that already uh, available in, in Photoshop and see which one works uh, works for me. And I think I like this one. Again, make sure to experiment and play around with these. And you can always tweak them, uh, tweak the opacity. So once I'm happy, I, I will merge them and then add my final touch. But before merging them, I highly recommend just putting everything into a group and then duplicating that group and merging that. Because... I always say that to, to my friends is always try to work as non-destructive as possible because it's easier to go back to it and tweak there than, you know, having to import the, even if it's like two simple uh, steps that we did now, it's going to save you like 10, 15 minutes when it comes to, you know, making edits for a client. All right. So once that merged, I'm going to go ahead and add a really awesome plugin called Magic Bullet Looks, which is really beautiful. And it adds so much. And uh, this, is, this is actually a preset that I already have. And you can actually save your presets uh, by just naming them once you have one done. And it, off, it comes, I think it starts from here. It comes with a lot of presets. And 
make sure you go through them because some of them are really amazing and you can learn so much from them because each one has its own mood and you can you can check out what what the edit notes that has been added to that uh, effect to get that look maybe you want only a specific thing maybe you want you like the vignette or maybe you like the diffusion or you know and and so on so make sure you you play around with these uh and and trust me i've learned so much just by going through the custom uh through there you know presets uh, just by just by you know applying them because I let's say I wanted something for that how do I do I get that orange look and I will see like life gamma gain does that and so on all right so usually what I would do is I'll go ahead you know what I'll, I'll go ahead and just delete all of these and then we can go in and add some all right, so here is the bare render. And to add controls, you just go here and you have different type of tools and you can select them uh, here by category. And usually the first one, uh, the first one that I add is uh, usually lens blur. Okay, and where is the, I think it's here. So edge softness. And you can see you can, you have different areas and this is a lens blur, so just add that and you have that control to it and the fall off and maybe and you can even control the you don't want it round you have an oval shape you can even control that and once you're happy with the shape you can go in and you can put the blur size to maybe one percent just to add that effect to the edges all right then the second one that i love adding is haze and flare it's also a lens effect. And this will add a soft look to your, soft atmospheric look to your renders. And just play around with the colors to see which one fits the mood that you're going for. And I know this is, this is a really simple example. It's just, you know, a cloth. But even, even for a cloth render and you just want to use it for a background or a presentation, you can add atmosphere to that simple render as well. So why not just take the time to, you know, tweak it and put that effort into it. And you can, you can tweak this. And I, I really like this one. It really looks really good. Uh, the one other thing I want to add is maybe let's add some vignette as well. Maybe a bit too strong and I can go in and tweak the strengths. Maybe 25%. You can always like turn it off and see see what's the effect it has. I think 40% might be better. All right. And to wrap it up, I'm just going to go ahead and add pop. Let's see where I can find that one. Yes, I'm going to add a pop. And this just, I can add it here. I'll, I'll just, you know, exaggerate, but like a 10%. It's too way too low. And 50. It just adds that sharpness because we added a bit of edge softness and we might lose a bit of detail. Usually I keep it around, you know, 10-15%. Uh, once I'm happy with that, I'll just go ahead and you know finish. And it just will take a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds to, to render. So this is what we had before, this is what we have now. And it, you can see it's a huge difference between uh between the two renders. All right, so next we'll jump into Maya and I'm going to just answer a couple of questions that I got on my blog and it might be, maybe it might help you guys as well. Frequent questions that I got on my blog was the fact that the mesh was a triangulated mesh and a lot of people had some problems with the subdivision with it, of it. And a lot of people asked how did it, how do I get the soft result? And a lot of people try to add a you know smooth modifier in 3D Max or uh, you know just add subdivision to it in in Maya, and it didn't uh, it didn't come out as as my render. So there are actually two ways. Maybe I think yeah, two ways in V-Ray to to do to add subdivision to an object. Uh, you can actually add it 
you know, as you would do in mental ray when you just press, you know, this is what you, you just, just hide this. Uh, when you press three, you're going to see it's smooth in the viewport. And that's exactly what you're going to get in the render. Or you can add a subdivision node uh, to your mesh, uh, which you can control how many, sub how many times you want that mesh to be subdivided to get that smooth look. Because if you go ahead and render this uh, without any smooth modifier to it, it's going to get something like this, which is really crumpled and it's, it's not soft. All right. So the first way is just press 3 and make sure under settings and V-Ray settings, all right. So V-Ray common and go into settings and here under default displacement and subdivision. Uh, usually the default subdivision is going to be 256 and that's way too high. Yeah, I never used anything over eight to be honest. So eight is 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 a is a good number and it's even even that is way too high. Usually if I'm if I, if it's not for the final render I work with three or four. So but let's say we'll keep it eight. So now if I go ahead and render, I'm just going to do a small part. I'm going to render this. You're going to see that is that looks soft now. All right. Now, the other way to do it, and I'm going to go ahead. So just one thing I forgot to mention is under V-Ray Common or V-Ray, I think V-Ray, Global Options, you, you must be sure to check this, Render Viewport Subdivision. This is what makes the... For people who've been used to uh, render with mental ray, uh, usually that was done automatically. You don't have to, you know, check any settings to get the soft render. But with V-Ray, you have to go into V-Ray on the global option and make sure you have render viewport subdivision checked. If you don't like this technique and you want more control, and by more control, I mean you can actually have different subdivision levels for objects. For let's say an object which is really close to the camera, like you know the one that we have here, might have a high subdivision level, and an object which is really far, but you 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 want to add some subdivision to it, but you, so you don't leave it blocky. You can add maybe two or three, and the really up close one you can add like eight to ten subdivision. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck render viewport subdivision, select the mesh, and under when you select the mesh under attributes there is v-ray you can add subdivision and then you have to add subdivision and displacement quality all right so here is the maximum subdivision set to four you might get 256 again make sure you're around four or eight this just works really fine all right so now if i go ahead and render this i should get the same result and to be sure i'm just going to stop this and i'm going to make sure it's on one preset and if we render we're still going to get uh, a soft look all right now there is a third way to do this instead of adding an attribute Let's say you have a lot of objects and you want to put them all under one group. You can select your objects all right, and go into Create, V-Ray, Displacement, and apply Single V-Ray Displacement node to selection. Now, if you go into Outliner, you're going to get Show All. You're going to get this node, which is called V-Ray Displacement. And in the attribute here, you have to add Subdivision displacement control it's exactly the same that, that we did before and you're gonna have I'm sorry uh, subdivision and displacement quality again four uh why is this better so if you open up this you're gonna see you have pattern 2d which is this guy but you don't have this guy and it, let's say i want to add another one i'll just drag and drop and i don't have to worry about any adding any attributes to that guy as well so now it's gonna, both of them are just gonna render with the smoothness subdivision that I added here. I really hope you find this helpful and I'm pro I promise that I will have more videos coming up really soon. So make sure you check out my, uh, my Pixelophy blog, sign up to the newsletter so you don't, you don't lose anything. All right, and see you soon.